Sometimes I just don't have the time or energy to cook, especially something healthy. I've got so much going on with the podcast and the audiobooks and the merch and some other writing projects. There's just always so much going on. Honestly, I don't feel great when I end up eating takeout for almost every meal. That all changed once I found Daily Harvest. Daily Harvest delivers delicious food, all built on organic fruits and vegetables, right to your door. It takes literally minutes to prepare, and I never have to think twice if the food I'm eating is good for me. Daily Harvest is ready when you are. Everything stays fresh in your freezer until you're ready to enjoy it, so you waste less food, too. No need to overthink any of your meals for the week with Daily Harvest. Smoothies for breakfast, crisp flatbreads for lunch or dinner, and food that's perfect for cooler weather, like their perfectly roasted harvest bowls and soups. My favorite is the beet and wild rice harvest bowl. Mm. Get started today. Go to dailyharvest.com and enter promo code RESPECTABLE to get $25 off your first box. That's promo code RESPECTABLE for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com. Daily, have you ever had your sock slip down inside your shoe when you're working out? I have, and I hate it. To perform at your best, you need to feel your best from head to toe. Features is obsessed with making the perfect sock. Ones you don't have to think about because they're custom-like fit means they don't slip, they don't bunch, and they certainly don't give you blisters. All of that is what I love about Features socks, but most of all, no slippage. You'll quickly become as obsessed with Features as I am. Features are engineered to help you achieve your best every day, whether you're working out or on the go. Features is challenging you to try a pair, and if they're not the best socks you've ever worn, they'll take them back. They are so confident you'll love their socks that they've also given listeners of Ratchet and Respectable $10 off your first pair of Features when you go to Features.com slash Ratchet. That's F-E-E-T-U-R-E-S dot com slash Ratchet for $10 off your first pair of Features. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas. I think I'm being groomed to be a dom. If you are a new listener to Ratchet and Respectable, and there are many of you, the last couple episodes of Ratchet and Respectable with um, Tarana Burke and Tanya Denise Fields have been pretty explosive. The downloads are through the roof. So thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone who listened. But I just need to caution folks who are here. <laughs> it is called Ratchet and Respectable. Those episodes were not our usual format. And <laughs> we're going back to that because we haven't caught up in a while. And things have been developing. Hence... Well, I think that I'm being trained by a submissive to be a dom. So a few months ago, maybe like three, this guy reached out to me. He DMs me and he says, I want to be your snack ministry. Usually when I do a snack post, I get a lot of DMs from guys who say like, oh, I want to be snack ministry too. And their profiles are nothing but snack delicious images. They're very often aspiring models or actors Sometimes fitness professionals who want to show off their physique and get more clientele. Whatever. I really don't care that much about the occupation or even the backstory. Like, I'm just here for the image. So this one particular guy, he says, I want to be your snack ministry. And so I was like, all right. But he didn't send pictures. So I went to his page. It's just a click. And his page was very, like, vanilla. Pictures of himself, like, fully clothed. Like, no, like, like, deep prints or anything like that. Pictures with family, friends babies, his dog. There was one picture with his shirt off, but like he was at the beach. It wasn't just like the random, you know how Instagram is. Like I just took all my clothes off to like stand in my living room. So really cute guys. I was like, well, um, did you want to send pictures that I can post? And he was like, no, I don't want you to post me. I want to be your snack ministry. And I was like, well, all right. Well, you know, if you want to send me some personal photos, he said, would that gain your approval? And I was like, that's a really like weird kind of way to like, you know, phrase it. But okay. And I was like, sure, send pics. So he sent me some pictures. They were very lovely. 
He has like 10 abs and his arm is the size of my thigh. Um, he didn't have on much clothing. He was standing up. He was like butt neck. It was like a towel over his, um, his man parts. I wish I could share the picture. I'm not allowed to though. Um, but he sends me these kind of pictures usually once a week, sometimes twice a week. He'll also send me videos of him working out in the gym where he's doing like a lot of grunting and he has like, they're not like booty shorts, but they little shorts. You see a lot of that. Lovely thought. That's not the point. But he only hits me up in the morning, like 5.30, 6.30 in the morning. And I wake up on East Coast time. So I see the pictures as soon as I get up. The captions are always something like, I want you to approve me. Please desire me. I need your validation. Things like that. So I just thought... This was like, you know, a ticklish and fun way to pass time. I mean, I always, you know, respond when he sends the photos because, you know, I want him to keep sending them. I didn't quite realize the subtext of it until I was interviewing Mistress Marley. So my understanding, and I told Mistress Marley this during the interview, if if you listen to that episode, you'll remember she was talking about being a dom. And I was like, you know, are you naturally mean? Is that something you have to like you know, practice. And she was like, well, you know, there are all types of doms. You don't have to be a mean dom. And she was like, there are affirming doms. There are life coach doms. And I was like, a life coach dom? She was like, you know, some people like, you know, to have their face sat on, but she was like, other people like to be praised. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. And that's when I started thinking, I was like, I think this guy is like a sub grooming me to be like his dom. Like asking someone, like, I want your validation. Do you approve of me? Like, it's a total ego fuck, which is, you know, partially why I participate in it. But yesterday he reached out to me. This is why it's all coming up. And it was the first time he'd been like really like explicit with the approval thing since the Marley episode. Did I also mention he's like 28? (laughs) And I was like, am I being groomed by a 28 year old? He might be 29. He's definitely not 30. But, you know, neither here nor there. But so, so yesterday he sends me this video and it's like of him working out. He's got on the little shorts again. He's shirtless. We were like chatting off and on for a while. Um, and so then he was like, I have to go to the gym. It's chest day. And so I was like, have a great workout. I appreciate the results. And he comes back and he's like, your approval means everything to me. He's grooming me, right? That's not normal conversation. He's grooming me. That's interesting. I'm being groomed to be a dominatrix by a 28 year old. That's fascinating. In other news, I got offered cocaine again yesterday. That's like L.A. standard. I've been offered more coke than I have weed since I moved here. People love offering people coke or like suggesting it is like an elixir to fix whatever ails you. But the world is starting to open up and I'm starting to get more calls about random shit. I usually get a call like every other week about doing some sort of like dating and relationship show, reality TV show, which I wish my standard response, because usually I know the producer's asking is, I love you, go fuck yourself, don't ask me that shit again. So a producer called me yesterday and was like, hey, working on this dating show for XYZ Network, I think you would be great. About half the time when I'm asked to do a show, they ask me to come in as an expert. So this call yesterday was he was like, we're doing this group of women who goes who go on dates to like meet the perfect guy, and I want you to be one of the women. And I was like, again, I love you. Go fuck yourself. I can't believe you asked me that shit. And he was like, oh, I told them that was going to be your answer. I just needed to officially ask so I could like go back and tell them that. We could also use you to be like our expert. Like you would kind of be like what Mr. Chris is on The Bachelor. We read your Bachelor recap. We just love like your dry wit and like the way you like spin a sentence together. Like that would be fun. And I was like, you don't want me as a writer? And they were like, no, no, no. We want you in front of the camera, which my dad has been telling me like I need to do again. I have my reasons for not doing it. And so I was like, well, all right, like I'm not entirely opposed to it. Like, what do you need? He was like, oh, we need tape. Like, let's set up an audition. And I was like, oh, no, absolutely not. Like, that can't happen right now. Like, one, my braids are six weeks old. Two, I just got bands put on my braces. My mouth is a construction zone. And on top of that, I'm COVID thick. Like, I will not be anybody's brand of TV ready at least three months. 
He was like, well, we need to do it next week. And he was like, six weeks, your braids need to come out. He's black. He has a black mom and black sisters. I was like, you're absolutely right. I can't argue with you there. He was like, pull your hair up into a bun so it pulls your face back. Like, we can play with the angles to make you look smaller for the tape or whatever. But this COVID thick. And he was like, what are we doing about this? And I was like, yo, like I'm working out. And he was like, oh, you're so old fashioned. That's so cute. And he was like, consider lipo though. He was like, just because it's more reliable. And I was like, um, I'm just going to stick with working out. And he was like, well, what about Coke? Coke is reliable too. And it's old fashioned. I was like, I can't tell if you're joking with me right now. He was like, just offering alternatives. And I was like, um, he was like, what are you free to schedule this, this interview? We just need to get you, we just need to get some tape. And I was like, um, next week, I suppose. The city is wild. What else is going on in the world? There's good black things happening. One not so good black thing. This Is Us announced that it was ending after next season. We're on season five now. They said they're ending as season six, which I don't feel very good about. It's one of my favorite shows. I don't feel like it's lagging. I feel like they have so many opportunities to tell so many stories. But I guess six seasons is a good run. Janet Jackson. Wait, did we talk about this? Janet Jackson's two-part documentary that's going to be on Lifetime. Actually, I don't think we did. We might have mentioned it. But it's for the 40th anniversary of her first album, Janet Jackson. Which, when I read that, I was like, I thought Control was her first album. You can tell my age by that, right? No, Janet Jackson is Janet Jackson's first album. But Janet is going to be participating in the documentary. It will be produced by Janet and Randy Jackson. It is supposed to give fans unprecedented access quote and unquote, to Janet's life, offering an intimate, honest, and unfiltered look at her rise to fame and her life as a superstar. Apparently, for the last three years, Janet has had a camera crew following her, and this documentary is going to show how she dealt with the death of her father in 2018. She's going to talk about the death of her brother. She's going to talk about that infamous Super Bowl performance and how she was blacklisted by the entertainment industry. And she'll also be talking about motherhood. I feel like there's a lot to cover. Is she going to talk about the secret baby? The alleged secret baby? Not the new baby she had at 50, but like the baby she had allegedly at like 20-something with the barge. That baby? She may not actually have a baby, but it's been rumored for years she had a secret baby. Is she going to talk about that Bobby Brown thing when he allegedly put her out in the hallway naked? That's interesting. The hidden marriages. Wasn't she married to somebody for like 10 years and didn't tell nobody? I mean, didn't tell the public. It wasn't our business. But I just thought it was interesting. Like, we found out when she was getting divorced. Like, wait, what? Or Jermaine Dupree? Because that was interesting. We were all a little like, huh? But they were together for a minute. So I guess something was working. Is she going to talk about that? Because all of these things are very interesting. I would love to know more about Sister Janet's life. From Janet's perspective. Because she don't really talk that much. And other good black news. Felicia Rashad is headed to HU, Howard University, the original HU. I am not a bison. Everyone thinks I'm a bison. My two best friends in high school both went to Howard. I graduated from the University of Maryland. I spent copious amounts of time on Howard's campus. You know, I don't even go to my own homecoming, University of Maryland. I don't know nobody. I go to Howard's homecoming. I'll be like, hey, I know half the yard. It's crazy. Or used to. I haven't been back in a while. And everyone, their mother goes to Howard's homecoming. It's not just Howard people, but still, I knew a lot of people that went to Howard. But Felicia Rashad, she is going to be the dean of Howard's College of Fine Arts. Felicia Rashad graduated from Howard University, magna cum laude. I'm reading this from the Afro-American. You know, I like to cite my sources. And the writer points out that this is not Rashad's first rodeo in the collegiate space. The reporter said, I don't have the name here, that he or she was a student in Fordham University's theater department when Rashad served as the Denzel Washington Endowed Chair of the program. The reporter notes that Rashad attended each meeting, taught with patience, and gave valuable advice and feedback to students post-performances. Of her new role at Howard, Rashad says, it is a privilege to serve in this capacity and to work with the Howard University administration, faculty, and students 
and reestablishing the College of Fine Arts. What's the story here with the College of Fine Arts? I noticed that they keep saying reestablishing. What happened to Howard's Fine Arts program? I know it existed. I had friends who were in it. Didn't um, the king, the king, T'Challa, Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman, but didn't he come out of the fine arts program? But apparently it was established and then unestablished and it's being reestablished. So good for Howard. I have a special place in my heart for Howard. On my bucket list is an honorary doctorate from Howard. I've spoken at Howard like no less than, what, 10 times at this point? When the world was still open, I used to teach a class on branding at the B School. Amanda Grubman, our Youth Poet Laureate, she's going to be the co-chair at the Met Gala this year. She's not the only one. Naomi Osaka, she will also be a co-chair. Apparently, this year, the co-chairs are younger than ever before. This is according to Essence. Billie Eilish will also be a co-chair. I was excited. I saw Call Me By Your Name, and I thought Little Nas X was one. But there's an actor in a film, Call Me By Your Name. But Amanda Gorman is co-chair. Kind of a big deal. There have only been seven black co-chairs since Anna Wintour began chairing the gala in 1995. Amanda is now in rare space with Oprah, the co-chair in 2010, Beyonce, 2013, Idris Elba, 2016, Pharrell Williams, 2017, Rihanna in 2019, and Serena Williams in 2019. That is very rare air for young Madame Gordman, who was recently on the cover of Vogue. And Louis Vuitton Kente cloth. Have they released those Kente Louis Vuitton bags yet? I keep seeing everybody and their mother wearing all this bright colored Gucci. You know I don't really wear colors like that. I'm still doing my capsule wardrobe. I only wear, with rare exception, black, green, gold, and red. White. I'll do yellow instead of gold sometimes. But that's it. Everything has to fit into one of those color schemes. Otherwise, I don't wear it. And I do that with everything. I mean, like, my workout clothes, my sleep clothes, like, everything. Totally a uniform. It's so much easier to get dressed. Not that just throwing on a dress and wearing one piece of clothing, which was also about convenience, was really that hard. But still, this year's theme for the ball is, In America, a lexicon of fashion. I have no idea what the fuck that means. It says the theme will honor contemporary American fashion. Somebody... Probably Billy Porter is going to show up in like a gigantic American flag. I can't wait. Not the biggest fan of American Vogue. Far, by far, by far, I prefer British Vogue. But the Met Gala is always a good, good fashion moment. I think it's in September this year. On a previous episode, I mentioned the new date. I don't have it written down in today's notes. My bad. Sometimes I just don't have the time or energy to cook, especially something healthy. I've got so much going on with the podcast and the audiobooks and the merch and some other writing projects. There's just always so much going on. Honestly, I don't feel great when I end up eating takeout for almost every meal. That all changed once I found Daily Harvest. Daily Harvest delivers delicious food, all built on organic fruits and vegetables, right to your door. It takes literally minutes to prepare, and I never have to think twice if the food I'm eating is good for me. Daily Harvest is ready when you are. Everything stays fresh in your freezer until you're ready to enjoy it, so you waste less food, too. No need to overthink any of your meals for the week with Daily Harvest. Smoothies for breakfast, crisp flatbreads for lunch or dinner, and food that's perfect for cooler weather, like their perfectly roasted harvest bowls and soups. My favorite is the beet and wild rice harvest bowl. Mm. Daily Harvest never uses preservatives, added sugar, or artificial anything, including their recently launched almond milk, which is made of only almonds and a dash of sea salt. That's it. This is convenient because I'm always stocked up whenever I need almond milk for my smoothies. Daily Harvest is undeniably delicious clean food without the prep. 
Get started today. Go to dailyharvest.com and enter promo code RESPECTABLE to get $25 off your first box. That's promo code RESPECTABLE for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com. Dailyharvest.com. Tamika Mallory was on Red Table Talk. I saw the um, commercial, I think on her page, right before I started taping, but I didn't get a chance to watch the Red Table Talk. I'll go back and watch it. We'll talk about it next week if it's, if it's juicy. I did see her talking about, she did a stint in rehab. She was talking about all the work that she does. And Tamika Mallory, if you're not familiar, is a, a very well-known, some might say controversial. I don't think so. I don't think there's any question about her love for black people. But there's been some controversy. I don't think it's well-earned or deserved. But I say all that to say, she was on Red Table Talk and she talked about, let me make sure I get it right, because we're talking about like addiction. But she started taking Xanax and over-the-counter pills to deal with, um, I guess, stress, anxiety, depression. She said anxiety during the interview. The other two just seemed to come hand in hand, especially with the kind of work that she does. But she talked, a, but she talked about not feeling seen or heard And she was like, you know, some people hear that and say that sounds crazy. But she was like, you know, there's plenty of spaces that I go to and, you know, they they change my words or they ignore my words. They don't hear my words and I have to say it louder or say it differently. And it's very frustrating. So she started self-medicating and then she ended up in, in rehab. I know she's got a new book coming out. I believe it's published by Charlemagne's imprint. I have to look that up. I wonder if Tamika would come talk to us. You think she would? I'm going to ask Tamika if she'd come talk to us. I don't know her, know her. I know her like double kiss, polite talk, and green rooms. But I don't like know her, know her, like her number's in my phone. But just off the top of my head, I just thought of three people who probably text with her. Let me hit her up. See if she'll come on the show. Hopefully she'll say yes. But in the meantime, I need to watch this Red Table Talk because that sounds interesting. I want to say the caption, which is what made me watch the commercial, was something like, check on your strong friend. You really never know what's going on with people. Oh, that is something I wanted to talk about. I I wrote this piece about Versus, the most recent one with SWV and Escape. It wasn't my favorite, which is fine. But I wrote this piece on social media that went viral. And I was talking about like how I feel Versus is going through some growing pains because they keep changing the format um, as they're experimenting with what to do with the show as it gets bigger and bigger, which is fine. Um, That's part of the process, but it's left the audience not really knowing what to expect because a lot of people showed up for Versus and they were like, we were expecting a performance. Like I think after um, Beanie Man and Bounty Killer did that, did a whole live performance, like they put on a show. Ever since then, people have been tuning into Versus and they've been wanting shows from their favorite artists because it used to just be like, you know, you could sit in your home studio and play your own songs off your laptop, and and everything was fine. And so some performers sing, some don't. It's been very, um, for lack of a better word, inconsistent. So the audience doesn't know what to expect. It often seems like the performers don't know what to expect. Like they show up and be like, oh, am I supposed to be singing? Am I singing now? Am I lip syncing? Like, what's happening? So it just seems like, you know, like they just need like a, a good producer in there. But one of the criticisms of that versus was Coco. And people said that, you know, she was giving much attitude. She looked like she doesn't want to be there. I guess she has a history of maybe having attitude problems. I don't know. I've never heard that about her. But people just really seem to be like harping on her attitude. And when I wrote my thoughts on verses, I was really mindful not to take any jabs at the artist. I felt like because they were the performers, they were getting the brunt of the criticism. But really what was happening was a production issue. The audience expected one thing, the artist expected another, and there was no one there to like bridge that gap to say that like, hey, this is what we need you to give. Like the artists were put in the middle of a bad situation. But as it would turn out, she was going through something. She had seen somebody injured. I don't remember if she said that the person died, a woman at that. I don't, I don't, I don't recall her saying that the person died, but badly injured and a lot of blood. And this was when she was preparing for verses. She wanted to pull out because she was like, I I can't under these circumstances. And she said her son was like, nah, mommy, you got to push through, which I'm with the son on this one. Kind of, kind of, 
because she would have caught holy hell for not showing up. And Coco is the voice of SWV. People would have been pissed. And she would have had to come out and explain what happened either way. But then also part of me was like, black women, because me and Tarana talked about this two weeks ago. Black women are valued for their output. And we're expected to be strong. And we're expected to push through. And we're expected to just do, 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 and go, go, go. And so part of me wishes that Coco could have just been like, fuck you all. I'm having PTSD and anxiety attacks and I just saw some crazy shit and I just need to sit my ass down. But you know why she pushed through. Because she didn't want to hear the backlash for it. She didn't want to be judged for it. And then there's the whole, like, I'm a professional. The show must go on. I respect it. I do, because I do it. But I also know how unhealthy it is. Folks seem to back off the criticism of her quote-unquote attitude after she explained what happened, which is good. Which is very good. Have you ever had your socks slip down inside your shoe when you're working out? I have, and I hate it. To perform at your best, you need to feel your best from head to toe. Features is obsessed with making the perfect sock. Ones you don't have to think about because they're custom-like fit means they don't slip, they don't bunch, and they certainly don't give you blisters. All of that is what I love about Features socks, but most of all, no slippage. You'll quickly become as obsessed with features as I am. Features are engineered to help you achieve your best every day, whether you're working out or on the go. Their targeted compression acts like a little hug around the arch of your foot, keeping your sock in place and preventing it from bunching, slipping, or sliding down into your shoe. Features are so durable and long-lasting that if you're unsatisfied at any point, they'll give you a replacement pair. No questions asked. They're guaranteed to be the best sock you've ever worn. Features is challenging you to try a pair. And if they're not the best socks you've ever worn, they'll take them back. They are so confident you'll love their socks that they've also given listeners of Ratchet and Respectable $10 off your first pair of features when you go to features.com slash ratchet. That's F-E-E-T-U-R-E-S dot com slash ratchet for $10 off your first pair of features. One last thing I wanted to talk about, and we talked about this last week, so I'm not going to go into it too much further, but there have been some interesting developments in uh, Portia's announcement that she was dating the husband, not ex, estranged husband, of a woman that she appeared on Real Housewives of Atlanta with, and the woman was listed as her friend. So several sources have said that Phelan, is that her name? Farron? Phelan? You see, I don't care enough to look it up. But several sources have said that that friendship was arranged by producers, that they're not really friends. There's an interview circulating. I think it's Candy interviewing Phelan, and she says that her husband... And the father of Portia's child knew each other and the women met through them. She says Portia was nice, had good energy, but she doesn't necessarily classify them as friends in that interview. Okay. Since the last episode, it has come out that Portia is officially engaged. The ring on her finger on Mother's Day was, in fact, an engagement ring. She is engaged to the man she says that she's only been dating for 30 days. And said man, once again, is still married. There was some question about that. Phelan posted on Instagram that, you know, thanks for your well wishes and and expressions of concern. But she said that she's still working on finalizing her divorce. So that divorce is not final. Portia is engaged to another woman's husband. Okay. Page Six announced that Portia will be getting a three-part series on Bravo just about her life, which... I assume that's what she wanted. There's been another woman that's come forward already to say that she was dating Simon. Portia says she's been dating Simon for a month. We're like, what, middle of May now? There was a woman that says she had been dating Simon. They met on March 30th. They slept together the first night. They were hanging out for a while. She was posting pictures on Instagram of of her stunting this Maserati, his Porsche, his Lambo, they all look alike to me. I don't know. Some fancy car that costs a lot of money. 
The interior was ugly as shit. The car was gorgeous. But yeah. So while he was falling in love with Portia, because he said he was in love as well, he was also dating this other woman who she was like, I was blindsided. She was like, I assumed he was dating other women. I mean, like he's a rich man in Atlanta, but she was like that he was engaged. Portia was posting pictures on Mother's Day with this, you know, gigantic ring on. And then the woman was like, yeah, he called me for Mother's Day. Which, by the way, she's not a mother. Folks went and found the divorce documents for Simon and his actual wife. Soon to be ex-wife, but currently wife. Like, he filed in January. I want to say, like, January 20-something. But he's also got this Instagram post from January 21st where he's, like, praising his wife and how much he loves her. Then they've got, like, vacation photos also towards the end of January where he's, like, all up on her talking about how much he loves his wife. Like, every day feels like a honeymoon with you. Something like that. But then there's also, like, divorce documents. And I'll be first to tell you, as someone who's, like, been through a divorce, like, I mean, it's an emotional roller coaster. Like, you could absolutely hate somebody, want to leave them, want to kill them, and still want to, like, take a nap next to them. Like, it's some weird roller coaster shit. I'll be the first to admit. But this is just a lot. Especially with, like, the new engagement and, like, the public announcement of, like, oh, we're together and we're in love and, you know, he's still married to someone else. Like, I could see if he was having, like, this big emotional back and forth with his wife. That would make total sense to me. And I'd be like, yeah, it's complicated. You really have to go through it or be in it to understand it. But, like, this whole thing with Portia is just weird. But she's getting dragged left and right. And the other day I was thinking about this and I was like, this is what she wanted. Like, Wendy Williams did this piece on Portia, and it was actually pretty thoughtful and compassionate for Wendy. And she was like, this man is playing you, and he's about to embarrass the shit out of you. And I actually agree with Wendy here on this one. But I was thinking about how, like, people who share the opinion of me and Wendy, which is most of the internet, I would say, to who are looking at Portia and be like, girl, what are you doing? Our values aren't her values. Like, we care about, like, not looking crazy. We care about, like, not being embarrassed on the internet. For me and Wendy, I would say, again, different degrees, but embarrassed nonetheless. Portia don't give a fuck. She don't give a fuck. Because if she did, she wouldn't be doing all this. She likes being a real housewife. She likes the attention. She likes the shenanigans. She likes the people talking about her. She likes that she got her own spinoff. She likes it. She wants it. That's why she does it. And then really, at the end of the day, how does this really affect her? Given her occupation, her core occupation, which is being a cast member on The Real Housewives of Atlanta, like, this is some shit you get a promotion off of, which she did, because she got a three-part spinoff. Like, as far as her job goes, she's actually being really great at her job. It's not like, you know, our friend on here that we mentioned before, like, he did some shit that embarrassed himself on the internet, and now he can't find a job, he said. Portia, in her field of work, she's gold. She's absolute gold right now. She's going to make more money off of it. She's going to be more infamous off of it. She's going to have her ego stroked more off of it. She's actually good. As far as her worldview of values goes, she's good money. So, you know, good for her. It ain't my life. So. So that's the episode for this week. I mentioned before, and I'll mention every episode, the Don't Waste Your Pretty Vs. I put them up on the site after much delay. They're selling. So if you want to get one in your size, please head to the site. We also have the white tees. I think there's only smalls and extra larges left for the white tees. And in the pink and the red, there's definitely only two X's. But they're women's cut, so they have like a more narrow cut. So if you're usually an XL, a 2X might do you right. Oh, and the mugs. The mugs are still, the Don't Waste Your Pretty mugs are still available on the site. DemetriaLLucas.com Still working on that Ratchet and Respectable merch. I will let you know how that goes. It's coming. I have the trademark for Don't Waste Your Pretty and for Ratchet and Respectable. So I need to use it. So we're going to switch up the next round of merch. So if you would like some Ratchet and Respectable in your life between now and next week, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at Demetria L. Lucas. I feel like there's something really big that I'm forgetting to talk about this week. I cannot remember what it is for anything. We talked about the sub. We talked about the cocaine. We talked about Tamika. We talked about Portia. We talked about Versus. 
We talked about Janet. We talked about Felicia. I don't know what I'm forgetting. It's something big, too, and it's just, like, not sticking in my mind. We didn't talk about Handmaid's Tale, which is wild. This is us, but I did recap for that on social. I don't know what I'm missing. I'm sure somebody will DM and let me know. All right, talk again next week. Okay, bye.